Welcome to the bonus, you little you little pay pigs. Emil was just telling me that no, on wasn't. Emil was just telling me that on the subreddit we have a problem of of uh, not only bots but actual porn women, porn ladies who who are in pursuit Models, of I would call pay them. pigs. Let's see, pay pigs, Patreon. It's a problem. Or or Reddit, pay pigs Reddit, um, pay pigs pod. Yeah, someone was saying on here. Did you didn't just see like any of my search history or anything, right? I did. I probably did. Uh, well, can you cut that out <laughs> in case there was anything damning? Uh, yeah, we seriously need to do something about the porn bots and models posting on the sub because that is a problem. Someone, someone, whoever said that I am Greg coded or Greg is Ben coded from Succession? I don't know about that. Why? Because I don't like that. You're kind of tall and goofy. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, here's one. Broke subs. I have a subs that want to worship me, but they have no money. <laughs> and I'm running out of task for them to do. <laughs> Sad face. See, so that's probably... Comment some task I can make my broke little subs do for me. <laughs> Since <laughs> people are fucking with me. <laughs> doing RFK Jr. Impression. But that seems like it might be a bot, no? Yeah, of course. But it said laugh out loud thanks. The bots are getting smart. Yeah. Yeah, these people, man. Anyway, so this is going to be... Yeah, we'll have to figure that out. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. I mean, Will we? What are we going to do? I don't know. We're going to put in a... Make it so that you can only post on the sub we're gonna if change you the name follow of, it. We're going to change the name of the podcast. <sighs> I don't know about that, Emil. It sounded like Doc Brown. It is interesting see all, seeing all your bookmarks and stuff. It feels very... Uh, I wish I wasn't. Oh, taxes, stocks and reading, recipes, music, LADWP, SoCal gas, TV writing, how to write a TV, (laughs) the Pixar pitch, the 12 hour something, to fall in love, wit, 36 questions, Airbnb and bouldering training (laughs) for the audio listener. Yeah, I don't like this. Why? Um, Those have been there for fucking years. I mean, I didn't know how to do like, uh, I didn't know how to do bookmarks the correct way. So it saved it to my bookmarks. Um, right. banner or whatever so i don't even know yeah one of them's like tv pilot writing it's like when you go over to your friend's house and he's got like you know books like how to start your own record label and it's like he he didn't do that <laughs> and, and now all of a sudden you're just like hanging out amongst your friend's broken dreams yeah not me i um i i haven't breached the uh, but what is to fall in love with i'd love to know uh, I think, let's see. I think it was to fall in love with anyone. Read, Yeah, let's see. I thought it was cute. To fall in love with anyone, do this. Oh, and it's behind a paywall. <laughs> we'll never know. Wait, wait, no, I need to know. I think it was 36 questions. Uh, yeah, I think no, no, this is No, no, the other one is 36 No, no, questions. it's this. It's the, the New York Times list. But 36. You, have, you have both of them bookmarked. Yeah, because I think that first one I bookmarked, but then later saw these are the 36 questions you can ask have you ever done this no i wanted to years ago should we do it with each other involved right now oh brother you want to okay so i've I've done it with well wait do we want to do the 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 plane crashes first let's do the plane crashes first. i mean i'm I'm, uh, sure i uh, all i'm gonna be thinking about is these okay okay so for the audio listener well i guess for everybody yeah what are you talking about (laughs) No, these were. I uh, wanted to do these with someone. Uh, okay. You've never done it with a partner? No, not yet. I wanted to. I wanted to, but I didn't get around to it because I forgot that it existed. And I wanted it to be the the that just fucking whatever. I've done man. it a couple times and it didn't take. Really, this ex- this specifically? Yeah. Well, you're probably doing it wrong. How you answer the questions? <sighs> this is the New York Times list. Thirty six questions you can ask someone if you want to fall in Wait, love. Wait, but you have to do that because. You have to open the other one because you. Yeah. It's quick instructions. Read one question aloud to your partner, then both of you answer. I know, but hold Swap on. Swap roles for Let the next me, question. Link me the thing because <sighs> I have I have a New York Times subscription. Just through. go to thirty six questions in love dot com. No, that's not what I want. The, I want the the act the, the. Yeah, because they explain like they actually ran a study. Yeah, they explain that it's a. Um, yeah. Yeah. That explores whether intimacy between two strangers can be accelerated by having them ask each other a specific series of personal questions. The 36 questions in the the study are broken up into three sets, with each set intended to be more probing than the previous one. And the idea is that mutual vulnerability fosters closeness. Yes. To quote the study's author, 
One key pattern associated with the development of a close relationship among peers is sustained escalating reciprocal personal self-disclosure. So know if, hot, so sexy, sustained post reciprocal personal fucking <laughs> answer questions. Allowing oneself to, to be vulnerable with another person can be exceedingly difficult since mm-hmm. ex- exercise forces the issue. Not, not for me. Oh, wow. The final task. You stare in each other's eyes for like five four, minutes. Four minutes. Yeah, four minutes. And I, re- I remember the, the the writer said that she did this as a just as a fun experiment with a male colleague, and then they ended up falling in love. No way. Or something like that. Why didn't it work for me? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> maybe you're fucked up. Here, here's question number one, Emil. If you could invite anyone in the world to dinner, who would it be? You. I feel like there should be a guessing element because I'm going to guess Bernie Sanders. It doesn't say alive or dead, so it could be... If you could invite anyone in the world to dinner, who would it be? My follow-up question would be, where are you going to dinner? What are you ordering? But stick to the script. script. Yeah, given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? Honestly, this is going to sound boring, but I'd probably just pick a friend. I think people are psycho. It's like, I want to have Bernie Sanders over there. That sounds stressful. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I just like invite my friend Phil or Matt Mm -hmm. and be like... What a nice dinner. Okay, good answer. You can add. Mm-mm, so far. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you invite? Um, hmm. Uh, well, dead dad doesn't count. I guess it does, kind of. I would say that. I would say dead dad, um, which I could still do. I just and I'm pick going, up his ashes and, and take it to a restaurant. Uh-oh. Baggage. <laughs> If anyone, if I could invite anyone in the world to dinner, yeah, it would be, it would be, it would be him or, or like, uh, I don't know, some dead, some dead guy, some dead fucker from history, Benjamin Franklin, so I could just bully him. I'd just bully him the whole time. Blow his mind with chapstick. Look at this shit, you absolute idiot. He's all, his lips are cracked and bleeding. I wish I had that. All right, question number two. Would you like to be famous in what way? Well, you answer first because oh, I'm okay. not going to do it. See, I, we're already having an issue. Would I like to be famous? I don't know because it, but it, fame obviously is is varying degrees. There's Tom Cruise and then there's uh, Ted Kaczynski. Mm-hmm. <laughs> would I like to be famous? I don't. Huh. I, I, I don't want to be famous so much as I want to be, um, I want to be revered and admired for whatever my contribution to society or however big or small ends up being. If it's, I don't know, if it's, uh, I would say that so far having an, a positive impact on a small number of people's lives and outlooks on life is, is already achieving this to an extent and i like that you're saying you're famous no i'm saying yeah so famous getting stopped on the street left and right being <clears> thanked <throat> for, i mean i'm joking but there, there is a there is we've yeah, hit, we've degrees. hit some threshold of you know sure when i was in the amsterdam aer- airport with my brother and his girlfriend i got recognized and mm. you know there's so would you like to be uh no i think I think that seeing some celebrity, like we've talked about that Ben Affleck video where he's walking back to the car with J Lo. Oh, and he's just done. And he just fucking shuts the door. Yeah. And then he that walks around to his driver's side and he just goes, Really? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't know if there's an amount of money that's like worth not having any privacy or, or that kind of thing. I think the ideal, I, the ideal situation would be to make a lot of money privately through private endeavors and secret and nobody knows who you are and nobody knows yeah. anything about oh, you. Well, yeah, that would 100%. be my ideal thing. Question number three, before making a telephone call, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Why? Mm, yeah, it depends. Usually no, but if it's a big deal, yeah, if it's a big deal, I'll be like, what am I going to say to this person? Same. Nice. Wow. I am kind of falling for him. (sighs) What would constitute a perfect day for you? (sighs) You go. I did the last one. Uh, Okay. I'll I'll tell you exactly what would constitute a perfect day. (sighs) Waking up early, 
Hot. I'm talking 5.30, 6 a.m., uh, getting to the beach and having a two-and-a-half to three-hour surf session with wow. whoever, whichever one of my, my friend Tony, my friend uh, Devin, my brother, and it's like offshore winds, and it's three to four feet, and it's just perfect. There's hardly anybody out, and then we, uh, it's the water's warm. We get out, we get breakfast burritos, and I go home, and my I'm greeted there by my sexy wife and my dog. Holy and, shit. Uh, we I have, didn't know you had a wife. Yeah, we have sex, and then um, I just hang out with the dog and with my wife, and we watch a movie, and then later on go for a walk, and then we order Domino's. <laughs> we have ice cream. That sounds awesome. Wow. Yeah. No, this is a perfect day. <laughs> Come on. I'm skipping ahead to a bunch of questions, but go ahead. Mine is uh, just like ripping just tons of nitrous oxide in, <laughs> in, 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 in like a shed I built. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just coming up with like new disruptive ideas. And, you know, my brother and all my loved ones are just kind of banging on the door. Yeah. But uh, Is there dog shit in the picture? <laughs> dog shit is there everywhere. dog shit? Everywhere? Dog shit everywhere. I kick over a space heater. Yeah. And I just let it ride. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, I want to skip to the more intense ones because these are getting pretty fucking boring, if you ask me. When did you last sing to yourself? No, nah, that one sucks. Okay, See, I'm, you, I'm going up to question How are we supposed 10. to fall in love if you're going to skip well, it? Well, I'm just... Uh, oh, jeez, man. Take four minutes and tell your partner your life story in as much detail nah, as possible. That's a snoozer. Yeah. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? Uh, the ability to fucking uh, digest lactose. Where are you? I'm on question 12. If you could wake up tomorrow and have gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? Yeah, it would be to be able to digest lactose, Mm. dairy products. Sick of this shit. I would want to be a a polyglot who is very easy, who can easily pick up languages. That's nerdy of you. I'm skipping. I don't think this is going to work between us. Yeah, yeah, I I know. What is the... mm, Wait, what about this one? If a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? Who has wronged me? I'm kidding. What would I want to know if a crystal ball could tell? Um, hmm. Ooh, that's it. See, th- these are these are questions where I would really want to answer them genuinely, and it would take me too much time to answer. Right, and we're not actually trying to fall in love with yeah, each other. Yeah, no, no. What is your most treasured memory? Snooze. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's skip to the fucking plane crashes. Why right. don't we? All right. I don't love them, folks. Just so you know. Okay. So we're he can't even he can't even commit to three sets of questions. We're- <laughs> we're it's meant to take hours to go through those should questions. we at least do the four minutes of uninterrupted staring no i don't think people want that you know it's funny i did go to a uh i went to a don't look at me like no that. what what is it i went to a meditation retreat mm-hmm. and it was um jack jack cornfield do you know that guy it's like the og yes meditation guy um well like western meditation guy but so you wear cowboy hats and boots? No, not that West. While you, while you meditate? Um, and I obviously didn't know anyone. I went alone. And at one point he did a thing where I, he started describing something. It became clear that we were going to do something like this because he was like, you need to get, you need to find a partner. And mm-hmm. I was just kind of being very sheepish and not finding a partner. So I was like, this is great. I just won't, I don't want to do this one anyway. And then he kept being like, if you don't find a partner, we'll find you a partner. You need to have a partner. Terrifying. And so finally, this woman, maybe in her 50s, was like, we can be partners. And <laughs> and it was that. Did you end up fucking this lady? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. But it was just, it is, it's funny because in the thing they describe, it says two minutes of uninterrupted staring is intense. Four minutes is like whatever. And They've done studies where they had strangers do it and they felt feelings for the person afterward. Oh, it's very never strange. never even spoken to them. But yeah. so we did it and it was probably like 10 minutes of meditation staring into each. I just, I, I started crying. I was like, I don't know why this is happening. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was. Can you imagine doing it with Tony Jose and you're both fucked up on whippets and there's dog just, shit everywhere? <laughs> you just locked eyes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to go back and listen to the main episode because, uh, it's a doozy. <laughs> okay. Top five. Ben's, Ben's top five playing grass. 
Okay. All right. Hit me first. First one. Aloha Airlines. Number one. Flight 243. Aloha Airlines. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to try to rattle these off the dome from what I remember about them. But Aloha Airlines was a regional airline in, you guessed it. Nebraska. No. Hawaii. Hawaii. That's right. And they were... They were operating a fleet of 737 aircraft. And for those of you who don't know the 737, it is known as a, it's the workhorse of Boeing's entire fleet. They are, think of Southwest. Southwest runs an entire fleet of just 737s. And so a couple of things. These, these, every airplane is certified to fly X number of cycles, and a cycle is a takeoff and a landing. So let's just call it 30,000 cycles. Okay, 30,000 cycles. 30,000 cycles. After which point it is recommended by the manufacturer that certain maintenance things get implemented and, and they check out certain things and all that stuff. Uh, so before we get to actually that, the, the crash itself wasn't a crash. It was, it was an accident. And here's a photo of the accident. It was... Um, Mid-flight, the top of the fuselage, about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, just about six rows in length, the top of the fuselage ripped off. This is a terrifying picture. It is terrifying. There was only one death. It was a flight attendant who was unfortunately sucked out, and they never found her. She got her butt sucked out? She got her butt sucked out. Technically, yeah, it was her (laughs) butt that got sucked out. But it was it's like something out of a- They never found her? They never found her, no. She probably. Well, we don't know if she died then. We. (laughs) Fair, sure, it's fair, but uh, they. uh... (laughs) Anyway, they the the. They, first of all, these people got incredibly lucky that the top of the fuselage failed and not the bottom. Because if it was the bottom, the nose of the the nose of the aircraft would have just fucking flipped over, and then they would have been all fucked. But so they rapidly descended and ended up landing mostly without incident, and it's just a fucking miracle. But so, and this is what I love about plane crashes: is learning how they the the NTSB and the FAA then learned what the cause was because it exposes some flaw in processes right. and stuff in manufacturing that they then implement a change that ensures it makes me feel safer. Like, Oh, they, 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 they didn't see this one flaw. They've already it, made it. So the planes don't rip off anymore, they, they, which yes, is great. Exactly. So part of the problem with this, what year was this, by the way, this was 1988, I believe. Damn, They didn't know about not letting the top rip off yet, which is wild. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. They didn't know. Well, so when I talked about cycles, when a plane gets to altitude and and goes back, basically in that in that time between um, being just on the ground and in the air, the the fuselage expands and contracts, and so it's meant it's designed to do that, but it's only designed to be able to withstand X number of cycles and. At around 30,000 is when they recommend starting to do certain maintenance checks and whatnot. And this one, because it was a regional uh, airplane, it was doing a lot more daily cycles than otherwise. It basically it got to that threshold a lot sooner. And basically, like nobody was paying attention. Mm. So it had exceeded... It had exceeded its safe... I'm butchering this. Like but, landings and takeoffs. Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. And there was metal. Because oh, maybe it was flying people from Oahu to say. Uh, Kauai. Sure. Of eight times Oahu a day. Oahu to the Big Island. And. Oahu to Maui. It had metal fatigue. Maui to the Big Island. Sure. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Kauai to the Big Island. <laughs> Maui to Oahu. Stop. Stop. Okay. So. They, they, it was metal fatigue that caused, there was, it just finally that one day, the cracks that had been started, just, you were, if you were on that flight, you were just unlucky enough to, to, um, be fucked by it. But so they, they found that in their investigations, they found that the maintenance checks were being performed at night, making it extremely hard to see Mm. 
the cracks, the cracks that sure. were occurring. So, whose genius idea was that? It was probably to save money or something. I could look it up right now, but I am. I guess you could say they weren't flying with Aloha. No, they were not. Do you know about driving with Aloha? No, is that where you just are driving with good No, vibes? like when you rent a car in Hawaii, they'll say, just so you know, we're not like you fucking crazy mainlanders. We drive with Aloha here. And you really feel it. Like People are way more mellow? Pfft, yeah. It's That's like, cool. I like that. That's how I drive in LA. And everyone's like, just fucking go. Mm-hmm. I don't care. One more. Everyone go. Mm. I don't even have to go anywhere. You just park your car. That's driving with Aloha. The next flight is Alaska Airlines Flight 261. Alaska Flight 261. Let me pull it up here. Flight 261. Um, it was a McDonnell Douglas MD-83, and uh, it was flying, let's see, it was flying from, the destination was Seattle, and it was flying from uh, Licenciado Gustavo Diaz Ordaz International Airport. I believe that's from... A lot of people died. Mexico. On, a lot of people died on this one. Yeah, everybody died. Mm-hmm. That's it was true. In, it 80, was eighty-eight out of eighty-eight. January thirty-first, two thousand. So this one was, oh man. So mid-flight, all of a sudden, the plane goes into a nosedive over the Pacific Ocean, just full-on fucking nosedive. And the pilots are, it, I mean, you can hear the screaming, the, the black box. No, no, no. Oh. You can hear the the pilot is fucking cool and calm. He says, yeah, we're in an uncontrolled dive here. And then they pull out of it and they're level for a bit, but then they dive again. And the, the pilot ended up doing what um, Denzel Washington does in that movie Flight. Oh, dude. And he yes. inverts it. And he saves them? He was flying inverted over the Pacific and air traffic control called to another nearby aircraft to see if he had eyes on him. He said, yeah, I see him right now. He's inverted. And then uh, he ended up um, oh. landing in the ocean. Denzel could have landed it. He did land it. Wait, so you know well, that? Kinda. You know how you did that, the pilot's cool and collected? Yeah. You know where that comes from? What, the word cool, the phrase cool and collected? No, that like pilots talking like that? No. Have you read the right stuff? No. Wait, how have you never read the... You about love Chuck it. Yeager? I've seen the movie. The right it's stuff. about all of them, but yeah. Chuck Yeager is the guy because he'd be fucking in tailspins, everything would be going wrong, and he would he would be able to get on the radio and just be telling them calmly what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then every pilot started to be like, uh, oh, I want to like be him. this, That's right. you know, brass balls fucking... Because it's all about ascending the ziggurat and it's the, it's sick. If you've I never do be read ascending the, rest, the ziggurat. If you've never read... The right stuff. Read it. Chuck Yeager was an American hero who was a, a very, very famous test pilot. I believe he was the first to break the sound barrier um, and other things. But so this plane, they ended up figuring out that uh, the rear stabilizer had failed, causing... And that's what makes the plane actually take off. It's the fin on, on the tail. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> right, it tilts. At the tail, yeah. So if you've ever put your your um, hand out the window on the freeway, oh, plane, and, I don't think you're and you put your <laughs> you put your hand like angled upward, your your hand shoots up. Yep. And the opposite is what happened. All of a sudden, the the rear stabilizer pointed down, and it put them in a nosedive. That was all because of a fucking jack screw. Goddamn jack screw. Which screws, controls yeah. the the rear stabilizer. A nut goes up and down on it. And they found that the threading of the nut was still there. And it was because of, uh, it was, the jack screw was not properly lubricated. Why? Because the airline was cutting costs. God damn it. Mm -hmm. They were cutting costs and it led to the jack screw not being properly lubricated, which led to the deaths of all these people. So that changed their uh, protocols for, because it was basically, I believe the FAA was just entrusting these airlines to just, oh, yeah, they, they know that it's bad business to have planes crash. No. The free market will figure free it out. Free market will figure it out. No. Okay, this is actually probably my top one because it's so tragic. Oh, so these are in no particular order. No, they're in no particular order. Oh, you order. like when they're more tragic. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so much to have learned and because it is it involves aerodynamics and all that stuff it is american flight 191 and it crashed because the the left side 
engine fell off during takeoff and the pilots did not know that it fell off. All they thought, all they knew was that we've lost the engine power. They did not realize that it had fallen off, which then severed the hydraulic. By the way, I'm telling all of these to Jessica as we're walking to a Dodger game and this guy's hearing all of it behind us. But so it severed all the hydraulics uh, cables and stuff, which caused the slats to retract on the wing, thus providing the left wing with less lift, causing the left wing to dip. Did, did that make sense? I don't know. It's okay, fine. so what basically, no, this is a really easy concept. When a plane is taking off and landing, it there are things called slats and flaps on the wing that expand to give the wing more surface area. Sure. The more surface area you've got, the less airspeed you need to take off and land. That's why you've got it on takeoff, so that you can take off at a slower speed, and that's how you slow down. Were you just snoring? Were you making a snoring sound? No, I think I'm a- so basically, think of it. Think of it like this. Like this is just the the wing normal. Here, show, zoom in on this. Yeah, there we go. This is the wing normally, like during flight and during takeoff and landing, it expands the size of the wing. Yeah, I've seen yeah. him. I've seen him move on the exactly. Wings. Yeah, yeah. So when this uh, when the engine fell off, it cut the hydraulics, like I said, causing the slats and stuff to go back to their original position, thereby thereby providing the left wing with significantly less lift causing it to dip like that. And the pilots didn't know it, and they ended up fucking crashing. Everybody died. If they had known that, they could have accounted for that and yeah. like fucking saved the and day. And so what we learned from that one is you don't want your left engine to fall off. So You don't want your left engine to fall off. fix that. So at the time, American Airlines, Continental Airlines. Are those Airlines, engines or just the big propellers? What? Don't look at me like that. The full-on uh-huh. engine. Yeah, the full-on engine on the pylon completely came off. Right, those big things that look like huge propellers. Yeah, that's the are you talking the 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 fan blade? No, it was the full okay, on yeah, yeah. entire engine, not just the fan blade, like the front of the cowling that you're that you has happened recently. No, it was the full on engine. Okay. The whole thing. But so at How the many time, engines are there? It depends on the aircraft. How many were there on this one? <laughs> Two. <laughs> okay. What's the most amount of engines? I, I mean on like a B2 bomber or the B1, is it the B1? Or the, the B52 has like two, four, six, eight, something like that. Hmm. And and the uh the the Ukrainian one has like six. The one that they the Russians bombed and killed, the biggest aircraft in the world. The Antonov 225. Fuck man. <laughs> <laughs> So at the time, American <laughs> Airlines Continental is this boring as fuck? Yes. But <laughs> no, you like it? I like it. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. And then uh caught fire and everyone left, but he made sure it didn't crash into a small town. Wow. He, like, yeah. Did he survive? That's pretty cool. See, that's huh? a cool story. That is a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> I told it like that. <laughs> okay, so wait, so why did No the- parts I didn't understand? <laughs> Well, so here's why that crash happened. They ended up figuring out what the fuck. What the hell is that? I get, folks, a little piece of like Emil's like furniture just fell oh, off. No, I think it's a set's furniture. Well, no, that's my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a ghost moment. So that's oh, you know what? That might go in there. Oh, I didn't think you did that. Oh, wow. It's in the chair. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to talk to the guy about that. So. American Airlines, Continental Airlines, and United Airlines had developed a different procedure for saving 200 working hours by cutting corners. Basically, to do engine maintenance, you needed to take the engine off the pylon, which is the thing that holds it to the wing, and then take off the pylon separately and do your thing. But they figured out, oh, you can remove the engine and the pylon as a single unit, and that'll save us a ton of time. And uh, uh, let's see, it was United was using a hoist and lifting them up, whereas American and Continental were sticking a forklift underneath and just like hoisting it up that way. But the forklift operator couldn't see what he was doing. It all had to be guided by like, okay, a little to the left, a little to the right, a little, okay, you got it. This precise ass thing that had to be fucking precise, they were doing it just guiding a guy on a forklift. And so what did that do? It led to them kind of like fucking it up and 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 causing again metal fatigue. 
that was like it was a ticking time bomb, mm. and they didn't realize it. And then this was the one fateful day that it finally gave during takeoff. So now there's all sorts of rules and regulations for how to do maintenance and stuff. And I think also it was a case where they found out that the the manufacturer's um, like maintenance guide was too hard to understand for most people. It wasn't in good layman terms. It was like for engineers eyes only. So people were kind of like the, the maintenance people were like, okay, I think I understand what's going on. So now they have to also make the maintenance guides easier to understand. Okay. Next one. Air, Fl- Air France flight 447. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this one's tragic. I mean, they're they're all tragic, but they. I'm gonna make these ones quicker. There are. You ever seen those little things that come off the sides of the airplane that look like little? They're called pito tubes. They're little tubes that come off the sides of the airplane, and they they are what gives the pilot information, airspeed, all that shit. Well, at a certain altitude, they had theirs froze over shit. and was giving them all sorts of bad inputs. No, and no, no, no. They ended up uh the two co the two pilots, you know, you got the pilot and the co-pilot. One had had the 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 main pilot, the captain was in the bathroom or something or or asleep and the two co-pilots were manning the fucking sticks. And uh, one of them had panicked and put them into like a fucking near vertical ascent until they stalled. And then they were stalling and stalling and stalling. And the other uh, co-pilot was basically they weren't communicating very well and they were putting opposite inputs, which was they were canceling each other out. And then finally the captain comes in. He's like, what the fuck is going on? Let me take over. And he comes and he's sitting down and he's going, I'm trying to like, what's going on? And the other guy goes, yeah, I've, I've had it in a, you know, I've had the nose up for 10 minutes and it's not working. And then the captain realized, you fucking idiot. No, we're not supposed to be nose up. We're in a stall. You got to be nose down for a stall to get out of the stall. And by then it was too late and they just belly flopped in the ocean and everybody died. Damn. Yeah. How'd they fix that one? I, I think, I don't know. I don't know that. How do they make sure the tubes don't freeze? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I think it was, uh, I think that one might have just been pilot error, which is the most terrifying thing, is that pilots can just straight up screw up. It's always some fucking French jackass. Well, so this one, you'll be happy to know, was not a crash. It was more of an incident. It was a China Airlines. I'll be happy to know. Yeah. China Airlines flight 006, it was on a 747, the queen of the skies. Uh, I still don't, what happened is so long and convoluted, I won't even get into it, but basically the (laughs) the captain, the captain incorrectly went through his checklists of, of what was going wrong and could have solved the problem a lot quicker than he did. But they ended up plunging 30,000 feet in just a couple minutes and they reached uh, upwards of five Gs and people were like pissing and shitting and throwing up <laughs> because they all, imagine you're in a fucking nosedive yeah. in a 747 and everybody's screaming, thinking that they're going to die. And then like... <sighs> I think like 7,000 or 9,000 feet just above the ocean, they finally got the engines back on and pulled out of it and landed without incident. And everybody just had to like embarrassingly get off the plane, <laughs> cover in piss and shit and vomit. Uh, Smelling like a goddamn Zappos party. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... That's that's it for that one. Those are all my favorite flights that uh, my favorite plane crashes. Thank you for listening. This has been Ben's favorite plane crashes. Those are pretty good. Yeah, those are. So you uh, told all of those at a Dodger. I game? didn't get to the. Ch- <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I didn't get around to China Airlines Flight Six. Will you tell her another time? You think? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. If the mood strikes. <laughs> hey, baby. Hey, I look. There's something I've been wanting to tell you. Um, you remember those plane crashes <laughs> I was telling you about? There's actually one more. I, I didn't ever. get quite get around to the. There's actually the other one more ones. I really like. Yeah. Let me set the scene for you. You're on your way to China. It's over the ocean. Yeah, you're in a 747. It's a the Chinese queen of the skies. flight. Yeah. We the start, Chinese food is kicking. We start 
taken. 30,000 feet. Five Gs. I hit five fun. Gs. I shit myself. Everyone does. It doesn't matter. There's piss and shit everywhere. They inv- they interviewed some of the survivors on the show, and there was a guy just going, yeah, it was horrible. I thought I was going to die. People around me are vomiting, and there's feces, and uh holy wasn't shit, wasn't pretty. Yeah, it sounds fucking mortifying. And then you pull out of it, and you're like, oh, thank God. I'm not going to die after all. This is, uh, But I got poo-poo in my pants. I'm usually not afraid of flying but now you are no i'm just i mean i'm just getting on a plane in two days it's kind of like i hope i'm not thinking about this <laughs> the cool thing is when you're flying in the upper classes it feels like you're invincible and like nah i'm i'm rec- I, look at how big this seat is i'm impervious to getting killed on this flight no yeah of course no <laughs> of course no <laughs> I'm not flying in the upper classes anyway. I am on my way out to New York. What Points, you, baby. What are you in? I'm in Delta One, which is basically Delta's first class. It's awesome. Mm. I got to pick my meal. I don't even know what I'm going to be eating. I don't use them for upgrades. I use them to like fly places. I didn't upgrade. It's just I'm using it to fly places. It costs like 55,000 points. Yeah, how much would it be? Versus for- if it was coach, it would have been like 30. And I thought, hell yeah, I'm going to do that. Screw it. Yeah, that's the equivalent of you basically just halved your flight. It's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. Steve Harvey has a video. I'd rather just fly again. Steve Harvey's got this video because you know how Steve Harvey does his little um, motivational talks before every episode of whatever fucking show he shoots. S- Steve Harvey. The Family Feud? Yeah. He does these motivational things to the studio audience before every episode of whatever, it is. yeah, Family Feud. And to, He does? Yeah. Like they're not filming? No, well, they are filming. They're filming that, but it doesn't but it make doesn't it on the air. On it's for like social media. And he's That's doing horrible. this one. He goes, you got to fly first class once in your life. Because once you fly first class and you go back to coach, you'll be thinking, I want to fly first class. And you'll never want to. You'll, you'll always be wanting to fly first class again. I've flown first class a couple times. I'm fine. It makes me want to go back. It makes me every time. I'm like, damn, how can I? I'm sitting in coach plotting and scheming and thinking, I got to wake up at five in the morning. I got to do a cold plunge. I got to do all sorts of things. To, 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 but for me, it's more like, how can I scheme and scam <laughs> American Express? You ever see those Reddit threads where it's like, my husband always upgrades himself, but leaves me in coach. Oh, I would never do that. I didn't say you would. No, but that, yeah, that's fucked up. Also, I mean, if your if your wife doesn't want to get on the game with you, you gotta you gonna you gotta leave her in the dust. What do you mean get on the game with you? Like get in the points game. There's a reason that he's able to upgrade and you're not. What if there are one in- Why aren't you hustling more? <laughs> <laughs> wife? What if there are one income household? Well, time to turn oh, from so a time to turn from an oink to a dink. One income, no kids to a dual income, no kids? Yeah. Assuming that they don't have children. Turn from an oink to a dink. Yeah. I get pissed off when I see children in, in business class or first class as I'm boarding the plane. Why? Because it's like, damn, you got you can afford that? Or you got that many points? Their Fucker. parents just worked harder than you. It's true. They did. So that should fuel you. That should make me, yeah. Are you flying back, coach? No. Or yes. JetBlue. Are we on the same flight? Yes. I changed my flight. Oh, nice. Remember? Yeah. So that we could record. For, for all these lovely people. I did it for you. I did it for you. I'm getting back earlier so that we can record. Say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Me say thank you. Thank you to you. Okay. <laughs> what else? I am very excited for our New York trip. Can we tell them that our, our moms will be there? Yeah, if you're out there and you... If you're coming to the show... Our moms will be there. Our moms are coming to the show. Then please just leave them alone. Right? But what are they going to do? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> well, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't have invited my mom if I thought, I oh, mean, okay. <laughs> now you're worried. Now I'm worried. <laughs> I'm flying my mom all the way from Greece to just get harassed. Dang, you're going out to Greece and picking up your mom and then flying her back? No, I've, I'm flying her out from Greece. Oh yeah. Wow. Damn. Are you rich or something? No. Are you using points? I use points to fly my mom business class to, on a Euro trip and back. What have you done for your mom? Flew her to New York to see my show. You haven't done it yet. Well, it's, it's about to happen. It's about to happen. Yeah. 
That was a nice surprise. My mom didn't really care that much. Really? I mean, she did, but I remember being so excited to get to our seats and like, hey, this is us. Wow, 3A and 3C. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> and she goes, are you kidding? And I said, no, this is us. And she goes, wow. <laughs> and then, Yeah, it was her first time. She didn't care? No, she did. She did. Absolutely did. She had some champagne and ended up sleeping. It was great. It felt so good to treat my mom to that. It is nice. Yeah. And also, word of the wise, don't do first class. Total jip. Business. Same thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, the seat's not f- like leather? Get the fuck out of here. Or whatever. The, the, the champagne comes in a plastic flute. Tweedly D is what I say. <laughs> do they get glass flutes? In yes. The- what oh, a- you get glass. It's, it's the same thing. What a dumb... It's the same thing. Discrepancy. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, yeah. Also, what's with all the people who talk? Even though American Airlines banned me from the Advantage program, <laughs> I still like flying American. I don't understand why, why everybody. Hate, yeah, people think why? it's. I don't know. Their I, food is good. Their service is fine. I would also say that there's no airline where I'm like, yes, this is nice. JetBlue. JetBlue. Yeah, it's nice. They have great leg room. Mm, literally, the last time we flew, they fucking the toilets were like overflowing and the the, the, the ran out of water. Oh yeah, they yeah they did run that out of water. Sucked. Yeah, that did suck. But for the most part, it's fine. You know. Free enterprise, sometimes you run out of water. As long as the toilets work. Oh, but they didn't. (laughs) That's right. One of them didn't. Yeah, but they fixed that right up quick. You know what I've been doing? What have you Tell me if this is bad or not. Okay. It's actually, I don't think it's bad. Okay. I'll tell you anyway. When I first hurt my knee. Mm -hmm. We're talking about his fucking knee again. No, we're not. In the context of flying. Uh Uh-huh. Well, they did the thing that they, they said, you know, if you're... If you're military, if you're... Injured? In, I don't think they said injured, but then as a catch-all, they said, and if you need extra time boarding. Mm. So I said, I don't want to I don't want to stand on my knee right now, like in line. Let me ask if they'll be... Able. And so I literally went up and I was like, hey, I have a fucked up knee. Can I... Would it be okay if I boarded early with them? And they, they literally like just like didn't even look up. For, they were just like, I don't care. Sure. <laughs> and Awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's not fucked up at all. It's a true, true blue use of your. But now every time, I want to do it. Oh yeah, go for it. And I have been doing it. Uh, you know, I saw this girl on TikTok. You know why I do it? Why? The first time I actually really needed to. Mm-hmm. The other times was because every fucking <clears throat> every time I get on a flight now, they never used to do this when I was younger, but they would. Uh, they always say. Oh, if you're anywhere after like group B, there's no more fucking overhead space. S- overhead space. Oh yeah, because <laughs> dick holes. Oh, let me tell you why. Because I and I've seen it firsthand. Dick holes will have a dumb little backpack that should go under the right. front fucking seat, and they put it up in the in the overhead space where it does not belong. If it can fit under your seat, that's where it goes. Right. Shithead. But so, or a jacket. Oh, I got my two jackets up. Fuck I actually yourself. do think more people are checking or carrying on bags than ever. Of course, because it's a smart thing to do. Right. That's how you or or, or I've to, seen guys turn their suitcase the wrong way and it. But people used to go up to the gate and check mm-hmm. always. Mm-hmm. But so now when they do that, I'll go. Hey, is it okay if I pre board My knee hurts. My knee hurts. <laughs> and then I just walk up completely empty overhead. Yeah, that's a good boy. I also, if you're coming for me, I make sure to go last. All the old people, sick people. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Boys, yeah, yeah. I say, you guys go ahead. There I'll, was a, I'll go after. There's a so woman. It really affects nothing. Sure. The, w- this woman on TikTok said that she has a new hack for getting on a plane early. And she says she goes up to the desk and says that she has autism. And it's overstimulating for her. So she would like, but she does it in a way that's so, she's clearly probably not autistic. She goes up and goes, I have a new hack for getting on the plane first. And she just goes, watch this. (laughs) Goes up, sets up her camera and goes up and says, hi, um, I'm autistic and I need to get on the plane. She's just like the most charismatic person. Yeah. I mean, it's probably true. I don't know, but I've yet to try that. See, this is what's anything like that. I think all uh, airlines. No, all what are they called? Hacks. It's related to hacks. It's like the strategies. No, relax, Jeez. relax. Etiquette. Etiquette is mm-hmm. going to completely 
implode because of TikToks and Instagram reels and stuff. People are going to be like, here's how to, and everyone's just going to be destroyed. Everyone's just going to be fighting for seats. Yeah, there's a lot of... Um, and I say this as someone who did just tell people an easy way to get to board early. Yeah, but how many people are really realistic? Man, that does make me want to try it, though. My foot hurts. Okay, sure, get on the get on the plane. Right, like what does this person care? Yeah. I don't know. Should we talk about the... Uh, Aspartame? The Olymp... Oh. The enhanced games? Either one. Yeah, okay. Which one? Which one are you more excited about? Uh... Let's see. I'm I'm I, I'm more excited about the aspartame thing. So a lot of people actually tagged me in this because they, they point because you drink <clears throat> diet coke all the time. I don't drink it all the time. I don't even have. I should buy some. <laughs> this makes you want to buy it. Well, yeah, because it, it's just a fear mongering thing. I have got this thing right here. The FDA sets the ADI, which is some. What is the ADI? It's the accepted daily intake. Right, they're saying you'd have to drink a fucking ton of soda. Yeah, they said uh, the FDA sets the ADI for aspartame at 50 milligrams per kilogram of weight. Blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. A 12-ounce Coke, Diet Coke, has around 200 milligrams. That means you could consume around 91 packets of NutraSweet or 17 cans of Diet Coke every day for the rest of your life. It's common sense not to do that, but it's illustrative that toxicity lies in the dose. So, and but then it says, of course, everybody reacts differently to certain substances. Um, if you're prone to headaches, you might want to avoid aspartame, as some studies show that it may trigger headaches and migraines. But also, man, just why? I don't know. Another win for the diet coke heads. Is that a win? Yeah, yeah, it is because it's not. It's not that. It's it's not a thing. It, I, I'm not going to drink 17 cans of diet coke every day for the rest of my life, even though I wish I could. But. Man, it's just so good. I uh, I don't know. It the it the point is it's yeah, it's yeah, the bottom line is a leaked report from a non-food safety agency is not what you should base your decision to decision to consume aspartame on. It's one of the most studied sweeteners and it undergoes periodic rigorous review by food safety agencies. Until those agencies say otherwise, there's no need to panic. Thank you. That's all I needed. What? Go ahead, pop it, pop the bubble, pop my fucking fantasy bubble. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know, no, I, I just, I mean, you know me, I just, I don't want any of that shit. You don't want aspartame because you don't know what it is? Well, now you know what it is. Do I? Yeah. What is it? It's an also, artificial Also, there's a sweetener. crazy story about how aspartame got through, uh, through, through the FDA's Tell approval me. process. Uh, I haven't looked into it in a long time, but you know who plays an important role in this? Annie Don't Aspartame. Don't put it in, it's just going to fall out. Okay. No, not Annie Aspartame. The inventor of Aspartame? Donald Rumsfeld. Donald Rumsfeld is a Diet Coke nut? No. He, I believe he worked... Now i got to look it up. He worked for Sweet and Low? I believe he worked for the company that uh, that developed it. Let's look it up. Good for him. Thank you to Donald Rumsfeld. RIP, down in hell. Or up, wherever the fuck it is. All right, ready? Yes, I'm ready. Ooh, this is from Harvard Business School. Wow. Wow. So you know it's legit. All right. What year was it? <sighs> this looks like 1982. After Daniel Sir had all but run his family's company into the ground, Rumsfeld took over and began cutting costs across the board. After selling off the majority of Searle's non-pharmaceutical business, with the exception of the Pearl Vision chain, Rumsfeld trimmed Rumsfeld's trimming helped Sir turn a profit of over $120 million. The real success of Searle under Rumsfeld came with the FDA approval of aspartame, the artificial sweetener that became popular and very yes. profitable for Searle during the 1980s diet craze. Wait, you're happy? This is the, this is the guy you want to be? I'm just pumped that they got Diet Coke out. Hell yeah. <laughs> Do you like the taste better than regular Coke? Yes. I, I don't like either of them. I, don't, I, I tried, put it to you this way. I had a... I had a Dr. Pepper at that bachelor party and it tasted so fucking grotesque because it was just, it was, it just tasted like syrup. And I, I just said, I'm not drinking this shit. And I poured it out and I grabbed the Diet Coke instead. Okay. Ready? Huh? So yes, that Donald Rumsfeld, the knowns and unknowns guy who, who remarkably executed some of the worst decisions in American form, for, foreign policy and got a medal for it. I've been reading up on this strange chapter in the history of Donald's Rums, Donald Rumsfeld and have learned two things. One, the chemical additive aspartame 
is very potentially a cancer and brain tumor causing substance that has no place in our food. And two, the reasons and means by which Rumsfeld helped get it approved are nefarious at best, criminal at worst. I, this is from HuffPost. I have no idea on the veracity of the cancer or whatever thing, but he did get yeah, it. Yeah, it's not. But he did get it through on on a very weird... Uh, Technicality? On a... Yeah. Let's, I just want to find the, the crux if, of it. I wonder if he bribed someone. Either way, I'm happy he did it. Because what would we have instead? Whoa, this is actually wild. In a peer-reviewed journal, aspartame... Methanol and the public health, Dr. Woodrow Monty wrote, when diet sodas and soft drinks sweetened with aspartame are used to replace fluid loss during exercise and physical exertion in hot climates, the intake of methanol can exceed... I mean, this is... Who fucking knows about any of this shit? Methanol? But the FDA... The effects of aspartame are documented by the FDA's own data. In 1995, the agency was forced under, under FOIA to release a list of aspartame symptoms reported by thousands of victims. From 10,000 consumer complaints, the FDA compiled a list of 92 symptoms including death. death. I mean, how can you complain if you're dead first? <laughs> that is a good second. I, are I, they consuming? Are they, are they like dehydrated and they're reaching for a diet Coke in the desert? Mm. How, how can you, how can you attribute to aspartame? What, like how many people, how many consumers out there are going, damn, I feel sick. It must've been that diet Coke. True. With aspartame. But this, in this it. is what I really want. Okay, ready. In 1985, Monsanto purchased GD Searle, the Searle we were just talking about, mm-hmm. the, chemical, the, chemical, the chemical company that held the patent to aspartame, the active ingredient in NutraSweet. Monsanto was apparently untroubled by aspartame's cloud of past, including the report of a 1980 FDA Board of Inquiry compromise, comprised of three independent scientists, which confirmed that it might induce brain tumors. So I'm going to think about it. The FDA had previously banned aspartame based on this finding only to have then Cyril, Cyril chairman Donald Rumsfeld vow to call in his markers to get it approved. Isn't You're, it wild that the, the sweet and low guy ended up becoming the fucking secretary of state or not sweet and low, but NutraSweet? Also, yeah, these are unsettling names. I don't like NutraSweet. <laughs> Just call it, I don't know. Sweetie pie, something a little less chemically sounding. So Reagan <laughs> uh-huh. was sworn in as president January 21st, 1981. Rumsfeld, while still CEO at Searle, was part of Reagan's transition team. This team handpicked Dr. Arthur Hull Hayes Jr. to be the new FDA commissioner. Dr. Hayes, a pharmacologist, had no previous experience with food additives before being appointed director of the FDA. And he approved aspartame? <laughs> On January 21st, 1981, the day after Ronald Reagan's inauguration, Reagan issued an, an executive order eliminating the FDA commissioner's authority to take action, and Searle reapplied to the FDA for approval to use aspartame and food sweetener. All right, rock and roll. Hayes, Reagan's n- new FDA commissioner, appointed a five-person scientific commission to review the Board of Inquiry's decision. It soon became clear that the panel would uphold the ban. By No, no, uphold it. They would oh, still say it. <laughs> No. Okay. So Hayes in- no. Hayes installed a sixth member. Huh. Good. On the commission, and the, and the vote became deadlocked. Oh, he great. then personally broke the tie in aspartame's oh. favor. Well, how? And the rest is history. The rest is delicious history. The rest is com- it's complete fucking corruption. Oh man. I mean, yeah, but it never tasted so good. One of his first official acts as FDA chief was, was to, to approve sip a, sip a diet coke. Approve and- the use of aspartame as an artificial sweetener. <laughs> How much were they paying this guy? Well, I mean, fucking Rumsfeld, Rumsfeld probably was set to make a huge amount of money. He was the CEO of this company selling off parts for it. And he's like, we own the fucking patent for aspartame, but we can't get the approval for it. What if, you know, when Ronnie Reagan gets in office, we get him to appoint a new guy. And then even when he gets that, they still lose three to two and then he's like shit just yeah, add a fucking you know what add a sixth one and then i'll we'll have we'll have them break you know what the, though they got what was coming to them they're dead yeah, they just, live long lives just like you if you keep drinking that garbage uh, i'm not gonna die of anything <laughs> diet coke related and even if i did you can't prove it hayes left his post at the fda in november 1983 amid accusations that he was accepting corporate gifts for political <laughs> favors just before leaving office in scandal, Hayes approved the use of aspartame in bed- beverages. Before I die, <laughs> I just want everyone to know aspartame is good and tasty. So, and then, you know where he left? Uh, you know where he went to when he left? Heaven. 
He served the, he served as provost at New York Medical College and then took a position as a high paid senior medical advisor with with Burston Burston Marsteller, the chief public relations firm for both Monsanto and GD Searle. I'll tell you where I'm bursting in my belly for a can of Diet Coke right about now. This is making me thirsty. That's right. that is fucking insane. The the amount of corruption that these guys have is truly yeah. I it it um I do wonder what they are saying to themselves at, at night before they go to bed. Oh, I'll tell you what they're saying. What? Hell yes. Oh this man, rocks? this $12 million bonus is pretty sweet. When Searle was absorbed by Monsanto in 1985, Donald Rumsfeld reported re- reportedly received a $12 million bonus. Ooh. Man, that could buy a lot of Diet Coke. In 1985? Oh, that's yeah. a lot of Diet Coke. That's Cokes. like fucking $50 million now. Yeah. So, Jeez Louise. I wish I could be absorbing something right now. That something is Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Straight into my uh, gullet, down my into my bloodstream. Hmm. Man, I definitely am going to get one after that. That's the kind of shit that freaks me out where it's like, it may, I have no idea what it actually does, but it's, it's certainly got approved under various, uh, yeah, and you know, extremely corrupt. Ow, fuck, my funny bone. Um, <laughs> extremely corrupt. The methods. thing is, Emil, it's like, uh, they, they say that when you, uh, for every 10 miles an hour over the speed limit you go, it really only takes off like 10 seconds of your, of your, destination time or one minute or something so you speeding on the freeway is really so pointless over the course of like a 30 mile trip you're saving two minutes which is underscoring the point that it's pointless and dangerous to speed right so too i believe that hey you're gonna die anyway and there are so many other carcinogenic things especially living here in los angeles where there's just brake dust as part of the air uh, everywhere i I'd mean agree, i know that it's not i'm i'm being facetious but i'm like hey if i gotta live two years shorter but i get to enjoy some diet coke brother crack me open a can yeah that's fine but like i think depending on th- there's there's levels to this right like i i'm not like nuts I, i'm not like a raw vegan or anything yeah. like fucking you don't pocket mulch i don't even know what that is it's a simpsons reference but okay <laughs> but but there are some foods where I'm like, that is w- <laughs> why that is clearly going to. Yeah. Like- I mean, that, that, but that doesn't even, that, that, that feels like a really shitty metaphor. I mean, like eating poorly and doing all these things does have an adverse I know, effect. I'm on saying your- that I'm one, if, if like, if, the, if my it- one vice is going to be something, it's going to be diet Coke. Also, I, I'm little B right now. I'm, I'm under. I'm lowercase Ben. For but, the audio listener, I am l- slunked in my chair. <laughs> I don't know. Even <laughs> is it that funny? It is pretty funny. Okay, it's pretty funny. But go on. Yeah, uh, you're gonna. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not saying don't drink that. Cook, do whatever. I just. I definitely do think that there's something to be said. For... I just think reading that. And being like, oh man, Diet Coke is completely fine. It's not what I would take it's away from it. It's not completely fine. And who knows how it reacts with my fucking Lexapro and whatever other shit I'm putting in my body on a regular basis. I'm pretty healthy otherwise, aside from the occasional cheeky cigarette. Yeah. So cheeky. I'm not about to drink 17 cans every day for the rest of my life. But yeah, I mean, put it to you this way. My neighbor- Put it to me. My, my also, neighbor- uh, as someone who has a has heart- Issues in me, there. my heart is perfect. It's perfect. It's it's the it is the shining example of a healthy heart. Sure. So said my ninety year old cardiologist right before he retired, and probably said to my dad a, a month before he died because he went to see that same cardiologist. <laughs> any any whomst. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I. I. I'm. I'm mostly healthy. I think that. Uh, I'm going to start taking it a little more seriously as I age. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm try- I'm not perfect. I'm trying to. I've, I've stopped drinking a lot. I used to drink so much. Alcohol? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which is worse for you, do you think? Alcohol or Probably the Coke? booze. Probably? You think? I have no idea, but the booze is not good. Mm. And I mean, I used to be the same thing. It's like if, you know, booze and the occasional psychedelics are my only... So, do you think... So? I don't think psychedelics are that bad for you Probably in not, the long no. term. I yeah. think the booze is re- like... I really was, bad. I was like, "This is why am I doing this?" But you can have you can have a can of a can of wine every now and then. 
Sure, but that's not what I was doing. I was yeah. having like 15 cans of wine. Damn, dude. You're drinking canned wine? No, I was making a joke yeah, I know. because you said... Damn, now I want a canned, canned wine. wine. Um, yeah, now I'll occasionally have a wine, but... And the cigarettes, it's like, you can't Oof. fucking... Yeah, they're everywhere. Right. Yeah, they're right in your face, too. They're so in your face about it. Yeah. I, I wonder if the, uh, Supreme, uh, what, what, uh, uh, the Supreme Court won't chime in on that, ever. They'll never take my canned wines and cigarettes. No, they won't. Because that, that's now... They're, they're, back, they're backtracking on fucking nicotine now. In fact, I would not be surprised. Dead serious. I would not be surprised if the Supreme Court ruled something about how actually cigarettes are safe now and dude cigarettes are back in a big way yeah everyone's smoking cigarettes again and and just nicotine is back in a big way then i'm chewing nicotine gum it's great but like tucker carlson within these right-wing people i think it was you i was talking to about this they're uh they're just now on a rampage of everything that they've ever told us is bad for us is good, and everything that they've ever said is good for us is bad. Right. It's and like, I saw them railing on Twitter about how actually sunglasses are bad for you, and they're trying to make you wear sunglasses because they're trying to fuck it. You're, you're supposed to be st- not staring at the sun, but like it's actually what, healthy. Is this some like Huberman shit? I don't know. I, I really don't know. But yeah, now they're talking about how. The Western world was built on nicotine and caffeine, therefore it's good. It's like, sure, okay. Yeah, that that's certainly... Damn. Just because it was built that way, it was also built on slavery. Does that mean slavery is good? You did well, you absolute I, nincompoop? I think if you were to ask them behind closed doors, they might be like, that's where we're trying to get back yeah, to. Yeah, we're trying to get back to that. <laughs> Actually, this is kind of a soft launch for slavery. Jeez, oh, man. We're trying to get back into the tobacco states. I think that's a good place to wrap this one. That's probably a good place to wrap. I'm starving and I'm shaking. It's probably because of that coffee I drank. If only it was a Diet Coke, it would be a nice clean high. Also, nobody's listening or watching anymore at this point. (laughs) You don't think so? No, I don't think so. If you are, sound off in the comments. If you are, sound off. In the comments. Anywhere. Yeah, just scream out your window. Crash your car. Don't do that. Anyway, I love you very much. Thank you for watching.